stand up for you in the world with spiritual power and authority that your kingdom, O oh God, may prosper in our lives and it will prosper everywhere we go. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. The reign of the conquering Messiah, and today our meditation is on empowered children of the Good Shepherd. Empowered children of the Good Shepherd. And we are reading from John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. He leads them out. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration. But they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. All, Jesus said, all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, he sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. Can somebody say amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ in this passage, he first spoke about the door to the sheepfold, or what you and I will call the pen. Have you ever thought of what that means? His audience. They were familiar with the manner of sheep rearing in Israel. It is said that the shepherd is literally the door. The door to the pen because you cannot get to the sheep in the pen without passing the shepherd. There are no intermediaries. There are no intermediaries. From the door... He turned to the shepherds themselves. He said that among shepherds are thieves and robbers. There is a great difference between the two. The thieves are crafty and they deploy all kinds of smart methods to rob. The robbers are bold and can be violent. 
if you refuse them. And they could be violent with curses. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. We, his children, are empowered because we have direct access to him and he reveals to us the keys to empowerment in the kingdom of God. There are keys to empowerment. He does not want you and I to go into the world like that. He wants us empowered. The prophet Jeremiah hinted about these times when he, the, the call of the Lord would come to him and he would teach us and give us knowledge and insight. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. Come back. You rebellious people, declares the Lord, I am your husband. I will take you, one from every city and two from every family, and bring you to Zion. Verse 15. I will give you shepherds after my own heart. This is the good God's words translation. I will give you shepherds after my own heart. They will be shepherds who feed you with knowledge and insight. It is not just about the prophet is talking about. It's, it's not just about gathering people in church. They need to have knowledge and insight into what Christianity is really all about. All about. The empowerment of the saints is the goal of discipleship. Every saint must be empowered so that you and I get to realize that we are not called to be ordinary. We are called to be men and women of power. The empowerment of the saints is the goal of discipleship to raise in every generation an empowered people will arise with spiritual power and authority to challenge the status quo. Oh, yes. You know, you can look at Nigeria, look at how crazy things really are, particularly with the endemicity of corruption. You know, endemic. When they say something is endemic, then it's permanently there. It's like they say malaria is endemic in Nigeria. So, so, if you have fever, the first thing they will say, have you checked for malaria? Uh, yes, that's what endemicity, the thing is there. And that's the way corruption is, everywhere you turn. But an empowered generation will arise and say to themselves, I can do something about this. I can do something. I don't just have to watch it to continue endlessly. You know, no, it is possible to get into the spiritual and disconnect the spirit behind evil. And evil will shrivel from the roots, from the roots. And that's what this empowerment conference is all about. To raise men and women who understand that they didn't, Jesus didn't die to create men and women who have no sense of spiritual authority or who think that spiritual authority is meant to be wielded by just a handful of big people. So that, so that it's not only when you, when you come to a big prayer meeting or some prayer meeting that you pray with authority. No, you learn to pray with authority even in your corner, in your closet and see the spiritual authority you exercise come through, giving you testimonies of the reality of the power of God in your own life. That's what it's all about. Now, yesterday we talked about the foundations of empowerment. 
because it's in the very life of the Messiah himself. You know, that's where we see it. Jesus was empowered and he conquered everything. From sin to self to devils to nature, he conquered everything. He overcame sin, self, the world, the devil, and established the kingdom of God in the lives of men and women. You know, they asked him, when, when this kingdom, this kingdom, when will it appear? Jesus said, the kingdom does not come with what? Observation. So you cannot say, lo, the kingdom is here, or lo, the kingdom is there. Why? Because the kingdom of God is where? Inside. It's inside. So when when a man has the residency of the kingdom of God in their lives, they're supposed to be empowered. Unless they don't know it. Unless they don't know it. So that everywhere you go, you have a sense that you are empowered. And that you can do and change things. Because of the power of God and the presence of the spirit of God in you. And that's why we must never forget. Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of who? His son. Yes, that's, that's what he, he made us. He didn't want you and I to be ordinary. He wants you and I to know that daily we are to be conformed. Not just in character, but also in power. As I'm learning humility, kindness, love, as I'm learning goodness and, uh, and uh, that all the fruit of the spirit, as I'm learning that, I'm also learning the exercise of spiritual power and authority. My prayer is that everyone who attends this uh, Kingdom Life Empowerment Conference will live empowered. I didn't hear that amen you know, Yes, live empowered, wielding spiritual authority and power in their world. Establish the kingdom of our God and his righteousness. Can somebody say amen to that? All the empowered children of God will make an awesome discovery, which is that as they walk in the will of God and follow the path he has defined for them, because that's the way it works, okay? I walk in the will of God, and I do the will of God, God's way. I don't do the will of God, man's way, okay? If I want the power to work, I do the will of God, God's way. And then I sit back and see that the decrees I make on that road, that heaven is what? endorsing me, you know? That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the principal thing. That heaven is endorsing you, you know? And so you don't hesitate to make decrees. When you kneel down, you make decrees. You know, I make decrees all the time, all the time. Because that's the only way to exercise authority. You cannot, they, they, if, if they made us kings and priests, you know? Kings and priests. But you've never made one decree. You know, like I used to say to some group of people, you see, a man is a, a king here. You know, and you come to him and say, sir, I think there are many thieves in this place. So. And the king says, no, sir, I see I'm true. Uh, that, that, is, that is total helplessness. That is total helplessness. That means the king is not aware of who. Yes, he doesn't understand. And there is nothing as tragic as giving a man authority who doesn't know what to do with it. Oh, yes. Yes. It's terrible to give a man authority and he doesn't know what to do with it. So every child of God must understand that um, Jesus didn't come here to play, to suffer on the cross of Calvary and die, and then you and I will again become victims. No. The purpose is to empower the saints. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. And then, when we bring all of that together, you know, because exercise of spiritual authority also involves numbers. 
And that we learn from Abraham, that numbers are also important. You know, when he was praying to God, he said, if you find 50, wouldn't they be enough to stay the destruction of Sodom? God said there would be enough. Okay, what about 45? Say there will be enough. 40, there will be enough. 30, there will be enough. Okay, 20, say there will be enough. 10, say there will be enough. Abraham didn't go further. Two things emerge from that um, a, a prayer. Number one is that in numbers, there may be few or many, but they are not easy to find. Uh, yes. They're not easy to find, you know. And that's why, you know, these messages must go through so that nobody will be thinking if they need 50 people in this Lagos eh, or in this Nigeria, ah, ah, they will find now. We have many general uh, overseers, eh, even senior pastors. And, you know, by the time you go around them, you will find. And what I always tell believers is that when it comes to this matter of spiritual power and authority before God, the only person that you can trust is who? Yourself. Yourself. Because you may see people in church, you may think they are the most uh, holy. Yes, so, but you, are not, you, you, you don't live with them. You don't know what they do. You know? And, and that's why it's important. When, when, when we Hear the word of God. Don't be thinking about another person. No, be thinking about yourself. I, I said to believers, add one person to the list of those who can wield spiritual authority. And that person is who? Yourself. Yes. Add one person. You know, you hear this, uh, this uh, 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 message and you say, from today, I will exercise my spiritual authority. Everywhere I go. And you know, when you begin to exercise your spiritual authority, heaven will be sending you prayer requests. Yes, because you are a king that knows how to govern. Yes, you are a king that knows how to govern. That's how people are get, getting all kinds of uh, revelations of, about things to make decrees about. Because heaven knows that when you make your decree, Heaven will endorse you. Can somebody say amen to that? Let us listen to our Lord Jesus Christ speak about these things and these challenges. I like the way the Amplified Bible put it. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. For I have what? Overcome the world. Yes. I've deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Can somebody say amen to that? This is why we speak of the reign of the conquering Messiah. He purposes to reign through his empowered children. We are called to enforce his victory over sin, over self, over the world, over the devil, in our lives and in our world. Can somebody say amen to that? We enter the kingdom of God through him as the door. Jesus said, I am that door, okay? Let nobody, no matter who he is, no matter the, the respect and the honor you give to them, let nobody give you the slightest impression that you have to pass through them to get to God. No, no. Jesus is the only door. Jesus is the only door. And we pass through him. And, that, and that's why the, the, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 12, I'm reading the Amplified again. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, 
He gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. You know? Who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father. But they owe their birth to God. They are born of God. Is there somebody here who is confident and bold enough to always declare, I am born of God? You know what the Bible says? You believe it in your heart. But when you confess it, what do you do? You can possess it. Oh, yes. I am born of God. I am born of God. Yes. That's what the Bible says about my new birth. I'm born of God. And that's why when I say I'm a child of God, I have my birth certificate. You know, it's for real. It's in the word. Because the new birth, you see, everybody needs to understand what the new birth has done for you and I. The new birth has brought us into a relationship with Christ. That is similar to the relationship that Christ has with God. Unless you understand it in that way, you won't rise to become who God has called you and I to be. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he reveals this in John 14, 20. Every child of the good shepherd must know what it means to be born of God. And the principal thing is in John 14, 20. At that time, this is the Amplified again. At that time, when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Okay, now, Jesus, you know, I've used this scripture on this platform several times, but everybody has to have a revelation of that because the day I encountered that scripture, it completely changed my life. And it changed my perception of who I am in Christ. Because, because Jesus said, the Father is in me. I am in the Father. And I am in you. You are in me. So, so the same type of relationship he has with the Father is the same type of relationship he has with me. Okay? So that in Christ, I have become one with God. That's an awesome, awesome revelation. And the reality of that is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. I want everybody to pay special attention. He said to his disciples, up until the resurrection, the Holy Spirit was with men, accompanying them, resting on them. But after the resurrection, from the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit moved from being on, on men who are called by, of God into his kingdom. He moved from being with them to being where? In them, inside. That's why the Bible says, unto him that is able, Ephesians 3.20, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. And it's according to the power that is at work inside. Yes. The residency of the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift that God gave to the church so that you and I can have the presence of God with us. And that's why when you are, you, we are perplexed, when we are worried, when we are confused, who do we talk to? Inside. You just find a quiet corner, you know, sit down with him and commune with him. You know, and by the time you come out, it's a totally different uh, 
picture, you know. It's a totally different picture. And that's why uh, um, when, when a Christian does not appreciate the power of communion with God, you know, he says prayers perfunctorily, you know. He doesn't really talk with God. Then you, you will not unravel a lot of your confusion. And that's, that's the secret to power. So the indwelling, that's why I can say without fear of contradiction, that the indwelling Holy Spirit is the game changer. You know, that's what changed the whole uh, equation. That the people who are weak can now become what? Strong. The people who are fearful can become bold. The people who lack courage can become bold. Amen. The inner strength we need, you know, everybody needs inner strength. Particularly if you're going to uh, uh, walk in power. Inner strength, I may be intimidated by situations and circumstances around me. They can be very intimidating. But in spite of that, I will still arise and do what God expects. Because of what? Inner strength. All of that thing is happening outside of me, but inside of me, something else is happening. The Holy Spirit is communing with me. That is what is required so that you and I can get into a situation and let the Holy Spirit that is resident in us use us to bring about what? Changes. Changes everywhere. Everywhere. You know, I tell believers that... Um, um, our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples in Matthew 10, 19, he said, when they arrest you, okay, don't prepare any speech, okay? Don't prepare any speech, how you will answer them, you know? He said, because when, when you open your mouth, the spirit of your father, he will be what? He will speak through you. That is it, you know? And, you know, a lot of people say, but how do you access that? How do you access that? Very simple. Lord, you know these people. You know what I need to tell them. As I open my mouth, speak through. Yes, so it's as simple as that. You know, it's because that's why they say some people think faith is complicated. No. no. Faith is in the heart. Once you believe it, that this is the word that God has given you as an ordinary person, you get into a situation, say, Lord Jesus, may your spirit speak with me now. I need counsel. You know, that's why I wrote the book called Pathway to Conversational Prayer, that everybody must have conversation with God because one situation differs from another. Okay? So if you are used to... Uh, uh, um, 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 praying in a particular way, uh, then, then, then you are not discussing the reality of their present with God so the Holy Spirit can give you um, inner strength. May he grant you, Ephesians 3.16 says, may he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened, to be reinforced with mighty power in the inner man, by the Holy Spirit himself, in indwelling your innermost being and personality. That is what it's all about, you know? And, and you find yourself in every situation, you are, you are dialing up to heaven to get information, to gain insight, to gain how you will respond. A lot Jesus Christ revealed how this really works in John 6, 63, when he said, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit, whatever. There is no profit in it. The words that I have been speaking to you, they are what? Spirit and life. Yes. Alive. Yes. These are quickened words. Quickened words. When you, you connect to the spirit and you begin to speak and then the spirit gives life to the word. 
And those words become creative by nature. They begin to bring about changes in your world because they are quickened. And when the word will quicken, when the word will speak is quickened by the Holy Spirit, it becomes what we call the word of faith. You know, the word of faith is awesome. God promised Abraham, you will have a son. After some time, Abraham came back and said, you told me I will have a son. But um, this Eliezer, eh? Eliezer is uh, he's going to inherit everything here. God said, no, Eliezer will not uh, inherit. You have, a, you have a child of your own. Ah. Abraham waited and waited. And then one day he saw three men. He said, these people are like strangers. So let's go and uh, entertain them. And then after they entertained them, he said, where's your wife? Stays in the tent. Okay, by this time next year, you know, the logos had become what? Rema. By this time, it has, it has been situated in time. By this time next year, the baby will come. Of course, you know what Sarah did. <laughs> yes. But you see, these are quickened words. They have the capacity to create. That's what um, Hebrews 11.3 is all about. By faith, the world we see came by the word of God. So that things that are not visible became what? Visible. Yes. So, the promise is situated in the heavens. But by the word of faith, they come into time. Can somebody say amen to that? Remember always that this is part of the reason why the word incarnated, you know, and the word, John 1.14, and the word became what? Flesh. And in that scripture, we are told that there is nothing that was created that was not created by the word. All things were made through him. Because it's the word that makes the invisible to become what? Visible. Now, now, now. The Genesis 1.1 says in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. Okay? And the Lord God said, the word, let there be. And the light that was somewhere manifested. The word is the instrument of incarnation. The word himself incarnated. And that's why, you know, when a, the spirit quickens the word in your heart and you speak it, then it becomes creative to bring about change. And that's why, like we were saying yesterday, everything depends on the vessel. That's why you and I struggle to lead godly lives so that we will not offend the spirit. Or grieve him like the Bible says. To make sons and daughters of men to become children of God. Who have authority like their Lord Jesus. That's why Jesus manifested. And he deposited his spirit in us. Remember always that it was the same spirit of God. Who came upon our Lord Jesus Christ at his baptism. The same spirit that came on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. The same spirit that you and I receive today is the same spirit that came upon our Lord Jesus Christ at his baptism. And he has released the spirit not to be with us, not to be upon us, but to be where? Inside. You know, that, that is the game changer. That the spirit is inside every believer. And you need to be fully conscious of it so that you can walk with him. Ask him questions. Seek counsel. And let him give you the word that you should pray with. You know, sometimes when I have a, a very tough situation, I will take a pen, I will take a piece of paper, and I will say to the Lord, I will take a dictation. Oh, yes. 
I, I call the Holy Spirit our legal draftsman, <laughs> our spiritual draftsman. Because you see, he will give you the words. Words are very important. He will give you the words. And when you speak those words he has given you, they bring dead things to life. Yes, they bring dead things to life. So very quickly, let us look at the good shepherd and the empowerment of saints. Because that's what this conference is all about. Saints must be empowered so that you won't fear uh, uh, elemental spirits, principalities, powers. You will not fear them. You will know that by the, because of the way everything is arranged, you know, he has put all things under my feet. Yes, you know, Psalm 8, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you, 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 took, you take care, you look out for him. But then he says, you have made him a little lower than yourself. Mm -mm, not angel, -o. a little lower than yourself. A little lower than Elohim. That's what the Hebrew says. You made him a little lower than yourself. And then you have crowned him with glory and honor. And you have put all things under his feet. Yes. You see, those are the, you, you, you realize that God has always intended before Adam fell, that man should have spiritual power and authority on the earth. And our Lord Jesus Christ came to reestablish it. And you and I must walk in it. So let us understand the process of empowerment. It is about preparing the vessels that will carry the anointing. Our Lord Jesus spent considerable time teaching his disciples. In his great commission, he told them to go and do likewise. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, then verse 20, which is often forgotten. Teaching them to observe how many things? All things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. That is it. That's how to make disciples. Raise men and women who are following what Jesus taught us. That's why the, the vision of this ministry is to raise men and women who will walk in the footprints of Jesus. Yes, that's what it's all about. You know, teach them to observe. Teach them to follow. Teach them to practice everything I taught you. And when they do that, I guarantee that I will be with you always. Oh, yes, I'll be with you always. So, the first thing then is that through his obedience to God, our Lord Jesus paid the price for our forgiveness and redemption. So that's guaranteed. Okay? The cleansing in the blood of Jesus is what positions the believer to appear before God without blemish. You know, a lot of people think that um, because Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, you know, sinners can now, you know, carry their sins to heaven. It's not possible though, at all. For a sinner to appear before a holy God, his sins must be what? Washed. Absolutely. Okay? So, so don't, don't be presumptuous. Don't be presumptuous. You know, every time you want to appear before God, wash yourself in the blood of uh, Jesus. Yes. If you attend our morning and, uh, and uh, evening prayers, we do that all the time. We do that because it's necessary. Why is it necessary? Why is it necessary? David, David said to us in um, Psalm 19, verse 12, you know, it's always important to remember that. He says, who can understand his errors? 
cleanse me from what? Secret faults. Yes. Yes. Even sometimes, you know, you may have done something wrong and you don't even realize it. But in order to be sure that none of them, none of such things will hinder you before God, you know, you wash yourself in the blood of uh, Jesus. And David, and David said, you know, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Then verse 14, let the words of my mouth and let the meditation of my heart always be what? Acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And you know that that's why we are told in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 19. You know, Hebrews 10, 19. The Bible says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of who? Jesus. It's only when a man is washed that he can be bold to enter a holy place. Otherwise, you will be dead. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So, you cannot be presumptuous. You know, you kneel down. You, 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 you go before God and you have not cleansed yourself. No, don't do that. The Bible didn't say you should do that. The Bible said, always wash. Always wash. Okay? Having therefore boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. That's how we enter the holy of holies. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Okay? So that, so that nothing will hinder me. Because Colossians 1 says, that when you are washed in the blood of Jesus, you are holy. You are unblameable. And you are unreproachable before God. That is it. And you are going before God when you kneel down to pray. And you want to be holy. You want to be unblameable. You want to be unreproachable. So that no, no, no devil can bring an accusation against you. All your sins are washed. Can somebody say amen to that? And we always have these challenges that the, the Apostle Paul called it in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. You know, that's why we, we, we wash so that we won't be presumptuous. You know, there are some things that, that one doesn't matter. What well, doesn't matter to who? You know, it may not matter to you and your friends, but the, where, where they are judging it matters. So rather than go there saying, I ah, no need to uh, uh, put that one under the blood. Nobody's... Uh, uh, concerned about all those type of stuff. I say, okay. But the person who is careful, who understands that the way the high priest is, 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 must cleanse himself to go into the Holy of Holies on earth, the same way you and I must cleanse ourselves to go into the Holy of Holies in heaven. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and what? Spirit. You know, perfecting. That is the only way to do it. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Yes. A Christian, therefore, cleansing himself or herself in the blood of Jesus before appearing for empowerment has an understanding of how the spiritual system works. See? The spiritual system, he, it doesn't work anyhow. And that's a common mistake. And that's why any Tom, Dick, Harry, who has been born again, anybody, no matter you, even if you are born again five minutes ago, you can appear before God, washed in the blood of Jesus. And what are you going to seek for there? Empowerment. Empowerment. So that the words I speak will be what? Spirit and life like the words of Jesus. Also, when he or she clothes himself or herself in the righteousness of Christ before entering God's presence, he or she is again showing understanding the righteousness 
of Christ covers us with his purity. You know, um, um, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we had from Jesus, which we convey to you, that God is light, and in him is what? No darkness at all. And, and that's what we call sinless perfection. Sinless perfection. And nobody has that. And that's why we cover with the righteousness of who? Christ. Tempted in every way like we are. And yet what? Without sin. Okay, Hebrews 4, 15. Tempted in every way. And so when I cover myself in the blood, in the right, with the righteousness of Christ, I have confidence that I can appear before God without a single uh, blemish. And once I have done that, then Mark eleven twenty four kicks in. You know, Mark eleven twenty four. And what does it say? Therefore, what things soever you ask for when you pray, do what? Believe that you have received. And then you will have. So I appear before God. I join the angels to worship his majesty. And I say to him, Lord, empower me. Empower me. So that as I go forth, the decrees I make in the name of your son will hold. I said, thank you for empowering me. That's what Jesus said. Believe that you have received. I receive this empowerment now. There is no magic to this thing. And it's not as if, as if you need any other thing. You see, in, in the world, they, they will think that it, it, there must be something else. <laughs> have you had people who talk like that? There must be something more. There must be something more. I say, no. It's the power of the grace of God revealed in Christ Jesus that transforms a person's life. You know, I, 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 um, I uh, had one revelation, you know, you know, all these revelations that you have that speak to many things, you know, and it really was really very threatening. And I was like, Lord, how, how should I pray about this? He said, just the normal way, just, just find them, cast them out, that's all. You know, and I just did that, and all that vision I was seeing uh, just vanished, you know. You see, it, it's, it's not complicated. It's not sophisticated. Everybody can do it. And when you start doing it in your life, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. That because you have washed yourself in the blood of Jesus, because you've clothed yourself in the righteousness of Christ, and now you have entered God's presence to ask to be empowered for the glory of God in your life, to be empowered to subdue every enemy that threatens the purposes of God in your life, to be empowered to sit on top of all of them. Ah, as soon as you finish making that request, what do you say? Lord, I thank you. I am now a... Uh, um, yes, that's what Jesus said. What things soever you desire. When you pray, there, believe you have what? Receive. No. So you come and tell me, somebody, the, the enemy is like, are you empowered? Oh, you're trying. <laughs> you will know that God is faithful to his word. Yeah, absolutely. God is faithful to his word. That's the message of empowerment. So that there will arise not people who are throwing up their arms helplessly, but people who are saying, no, because I'm a believer in Christ, because I'm a child of God, because I'm a born of, I'm born of God, because I appear. Before the God of all heaven and earth, I make a decree. That's it. And then you stand back and watch. Stand back and watch. That's what God is calling us to do. You know? And he wants to raise hundreds, thousands, millions of brethren who are doing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know? If, uh, 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 say, 100,000 people in different locations in this country, 
are all empowered. They know what to do. It's not the problem I'm seeing here that you'll be seeing where you are. Yes. So, so, so there are people seeing problems everywhere they are. And they're doing something about them. Yes, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. They're doing something about them. You know, they're not throwing up their hands helplessly. So what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? You know, what can we do? I've told you, uh, uh, um, uh, um, I have many of these stories, you know, but sometimes I just use uh, a few of them, you know. The, the, the brother that came to me, the, the brother that came to me in church and said, um, um, uh, and told me about the missionaries that um, were in Afghanistan in those days. And as usual, we all threw up our hands. What can we do? They are trying to kill them for having Bible study in their office to which some Afghans uh, attended. So what can we do now? You know, there's nothing we can do. And then I went home that day and I knelt down and said, Lord, these missionaries, they want to kill in Afghanistan. You know, but what can we do? And then the Holy Spirit said, you can do something. So you can do something. Make a decree that that uh, uh, Taliban government must cease to exist. It must cease to exist. Two weeks later, they bombed the World Trade Center. A month later, the Taliban government has ceased to... Yes, and, and, and the invading uh, troops rescued those girls. You know, so, so, so those are the things that tell you that, ah, 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 this thing is for real. Oh. It is for real. Because there are some decrees you make that they, you won't be able to ascertain. You know, but it doesn't mean they are not working. They are working, you know. It's after some time you realize that, ah, something is changing. Something is changing here. Something is changing here. Yes. But not to make the decree is to make evil happen by default. You know, evil is happening by default. And no one single person will make decree about everything that is troubling. Or, no, it's not possible. You know, you know, people have prayed and prayed and died. I hope you know that. Yes. They've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And yeah. That's uh, one brother like that. Pray, 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 pray. So one night, he and his wife, they are praying. And the wife said, amen. The brother didn't say amen. And that's it. Oh. He's he gone over, joined them, praying there. That is it. So, so that's why this word must go everywhere. The one I don't remember, you will uh, remember. The one that didn't stir me. You know, you can hear something. Because of your predisposition, maybe you are tired. Maybe you have other issues bothering you. You don't even, uh, uh, you're not sensitized to it. But another person that is an active combatant, he, he, he strikes a chord in them. They quickly go to one corner and say, Lord, this thing, you know, how should I pray? They have heaven whispers. Then you make the decree. And then later on you hear that, ah, God did uh, intervene. Yes, he did intervene. He did intervene. You know. So that's what we're here for. And every one of us must go home to put this into practice. Okay? It's a power game. I used to preach a message, message like that. It's a power game. It's a power game. You know, you have to be confident of your own power to take on other powers. You know, you have to be confident. And you have to know how your own power works. You have to know how it works. It doesn't work anyhow. It doesn't work anyhow. But those who belong to him, those who are used to obeying him, those who do his will, those who walk in his ways, they know that when they kneel down before God, and they consider it priceless that you can speak to the God of all heaven and earth and he will respond. That it is priceless. It is totally priceless. And that's why nobody can threaten you or challenge you. No. No. You go into where the controls are. The controls are not here. The controls are there. You go to where the controls are and disconnect them. 
Can somebody say amen to that? Okay. I'll just use one more example and we'll pray. Job chapter 1. Don't forget that everything that happens, happens by divine permission. Yes. Permission. You know, that's why I said empowerment. You must understand permission. You know? Lamentations 3.37. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? Does not the Most High send both calamity and good? Both. Both. Everything is by permission. And one day, the devil appeared before God and permission was granted. Okay? They put Job inside the hedge. The devil said the problem we have with Job is the hedge. If you move the hedge, ah, we will deal with the man. So God said, okay, that's what we are going to do. I will move his business outside the hedge. I will move his family outside the hedge. But he and his wife inside the hedge. And what happened? They said there was another day on earth. This is one day in heaven when they got permission. This is another day on earth when they executed their permission. And then disaster overtook Job. Disaster overtook him. So, there are two questions that every believer needs to answer. Can God grant permission when there is no cause? Can God? The Bible has only one record of that. That God can grant permission where there is no cause. And that answer is in Isaiah 53. Okay. Verse 8. Isaiah 53 verse 8. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? This is the New Revised Standard Version. For he was cut off from the land of the living. He was stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall what? Prosper. Now, this is what is called vicarious, vicarious sacrifice. What is vicarious sacrifice? I'm reading it to you from Webster's Dictionary. This is sacrifice performed or suffered by one person as a substitute for another or to the benefit or advantage of another. That's vicarious suffering. So what the prophet was describing is vicarious suffering that Jesus suffered without fault but as a what? Substitute for you and I. Okay? As a substitute for you and I. So that's the only, that's the only uh, example we have in the word of God. You know, because in, earlier on in verse 5, the Bible says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay? Finally, the Apostle Paul captured this. 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. So, outside of that, the Bible says in a Proverbs 26, a curse that is costless shall not what? A light. No, it will not, it will not catch. It will not catch. 
you know, I told you the story of a man I was treating his brother, you know. He didn't pay me, you know. Unfortunately, his brother died. And he said his brother died because, you know, we refused to treat him uh, uh, because he hadn't paid money. I said, no, we didn't refuse to treat him. You know, we treated him. But we told him to call you to pay his bill. Then he started raining curses at me. You know, he said, too many curses. So I sent a note to him. I'm not worried about your curse. Because the Bible has already told me that a curse that is curseless, it will not alight at all. At all. That is the law of God. It will not alight. So you see, when you haven't done anything and somebody is cursing you, you just shrug your shoulder. It will not alight. Do not alight. That your curse. <laughs> Stop wasting your saliva. It will not alight. <laughs> you know, so, 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 that, those are the principles. And that's why we study the Bible. So that people won't be, won't be intimidating us. You know, and, and, and claiming that this and that and the other. No matter who they are, they're not God. And God has the finance. Oh, yes, absolutely. They're not God. No matter where they go, they're not God. And that's why one of the, one of the words that strengthen you so that people won't intimidate you, they won't frighten you. They won't go and say, I'll go to uh, Okitipua Water side for you. Say, go and come back. When you come back, you tell me what uh, they told you there. <laughs> yeah, go and come back. You know, you tell me what they told you there. They would, they would have told you there that don't try this one, no, because if you try, you will pay. Exactly, exactly. So let us, let us rise to, 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 to begin to walk in the power of our calling. And there anyone and everyone so that the glory of God, and that's what will make Christianity attractive to many people. Because they're going, uh, like one man, uh, he told us that after he got born again, he and his wife, they carried all his juju to the lagoon. He said everywhere he goes, when he hears that's a very strong uh, medicine man, he will go there and pay. And, uh, and then he collected so many. He said they did two pickup trips to the lagoon. And then two, he said the, the laurel, the laurel too. They, they were going with pickup and laurel to the lagoon to drop Thousands and I don't know how many thousands all that thing must have cost. But you just kneel down here. And the power you receive is greater than all that thing they're doing. Can somebody praise the Lord? That's what this is all about. That's what it's, this is all about. To dare anyone and everyone. Bow your head and pray. And say, Lord, what, what an awesome privilege. What an awesome privilege. What an awesome privilege. That Jesus came so that the Spirit of God can live in my heart. Jesus came so that the Spirit of God can indwell me. So that everywhere I turn, I will make decrees to change situations, to change my world. I won't be waiting for another person. No, I'm God's man in that place. I enter his presence. I receive empowerment. I speak word of authority. And heaven will endorse me. God is faithful to his word. He said, I honor my word above all my name. We serve a living God. We serve a living God. So let us rise. There is power at work in us. Let us enter his presence to ignite that power. Jesus is the Lord of all. All hail Jesus. Oh, heavenly man, new world. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Bright morning star. I want through all eternity.
Say with me, oh Lord my God, I wash myself in the blood of Jesus as I prepare to come into your holy presence. May the blood of Jesus cleanse me from every sin, all filthiness of flesh, all filthiness of spirit. Father, I clothe myself fully with the righteousness of Christ. As I join the angels and the archangels and the whole company of heaven to sing holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come. Father, I come on bended knees Asking that you empower me this moment that as I speak words of authority, your purposes will be established, your will will be done, your kingdom will prosper everywhere I go, and the forces of evil and darkness will be subdued. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. And all the people say. Amen. Amen. Begin to pray. Begin to pray for a minute. Begin to pray. Take all of that in. You are empowered. You are empowered. You are empowered. In Jesus' name we pray.